so with grandmasters right around the corner i've decided to go through and make a stasis hunter build specifically geared for grandmaster content i know a lot of people run stasis hunter with aeons but with lucent finisher this season we don't really need to run aeons so that left a lot of people who run stasis hunter wondering what they will run what kind of build what they're going to do so for that i have actually made this build which is something i've been excited to make for a long time awaiting for lucent finisher's return so we'll get into that right after a word from our sponsors for the exotic we're going to be using with this build we're going to be using renewal grasp which comes with the exotic perk depths of dusk field your dust field grenades have a much larger effect radius allies inside the dusk field take reduced damage and targets inside the area deal reduced damage with this exotic in pve targets that get caught within the dusk field do 50 percent less damage while you and your allies that are inside the dust field will receive 25 percent less damage however this exotic does increase the cooldown of your grenade from 104 to 152 therefore it boosts it to the highest tier grenade category that is in the game so the whole purpose of this build is to try to reduce that gap as much as we can allowing us to get our grenades back a lot faster and to help us achieve this let's go over our subclass options for this build the first aspect we're going to look at is grim harvest defeating slowed or frozen combatants create stasis shards these shards grant melee energy when picked up by you or allies this will be very handy when going over the mods later on in this video because we will be making stasis shards pretty much constantly between the grenades that we're going to be throwing and throwing our withering blade melee into the whole crowd of enemies having it track slowing defeating them and creating stasis shards for us to feed into our mods later Later on in this build the second aspect we're going to look at is touch of winter your glacier dusk field and cold snap grenades have enhanced functionality for our dust field is going to increase that size of our dust field grenade and is going to create a small stasis crystal upon impact now the increase in size is going to be great because it's going to give us more room to have our allies and it is going to allow us to hold more enemies so they get their 50% debuff this is also going to make great use of two fragments that i've put into this build that is going to give us more survivability and a lot of uptime for our grenades which we're going to go over right now the first fragment we're going to look at is whisper of chains while you are near frozen targets or a friendly stasis crystal you take reduced damage from targets with a plus 10 to our recovery this is one of the fragments that will have a nice benefit from touch of winter as now our dusk field will now spawn those stasis crystals when we throw it down and this will stack with the reduction we already get from renewal grasps of course this doesn't apply to our friendlies unless they are also running a stasis subclass with this fragment the next fragment we're going to look at is whisper of durance slow from your abilities last longer for those abilities that linger their duration will also increase with a plus 10 to our strength this fragment is good for two parts the first being that our slows will last longer meaning we'll have more time to get the stasis shards out of them with grim harvest the second is that this is an ability that lingers so it will stay on the ground longer after being thrown giving us more time for that resistance or allowing enemies to deal less damage for a longer period of time next on the list is is whisper of conduction nearby stasis shards track to your position with a plus 10 to resilience and a plus 10 to intellect besides this giving very good stat bumps to some very important stats having the shards track to us is huge allowing us to play a lot safer and get the benefits from our stasis shards without always dying for them this impaired with whisper of rhyme collecting a stasis shard grants a small amount of overshield which falls off after 10 seconds collecting additional shards adds to the overshield and refreshes the timer will give us an overshield pretty much constantly as we are going to be making a ton of stasis shards and of course with the tracking it's just going to be a lot easier to get that overshield and finally we have whisper of shards shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate Shattering additional stasis crystals increase the duration of this benefit with a plus 10 to our resilience. This is the other fragment that is going to be utilized greatly with Touch of Winter, as that stasis crystal it spawns can be shattered to make benefits from this. And the stasis crystal sticks around a little longer than the actual dusk field itself, so you'll get the most out of chains, and then you'll be able to make the most out of shards for maximum uptime for both of these fragments to be utilized. Also because of this particular fragment, I highly recommend running headstone on your primary weapons you are using, as it will make many, many stasis crystals to support your grenade cooldown another thing that we're going to use to support this build are of course our armor mods which we are going to go over right now something important to note 
is that as of Hotfix 6.3.0.3, all mods except Raid and Artifact mods have been unlocked for all players in preparation for buildcraft changes coming in Lifefall. This means if you are a new player or a veteran player who just couldn't get the mods, you now have all of them, which means, you know, you can actually participate in build crafting. And that means you can also go back through and watch all my old videos, make builds for all of those classes, you know, just shameless plugging everything about my channel here. Do with that information what you will, and let's move on to the mod section of this particular build. For our helmet, we're going to run Harmonic Siphon, which will allow our stasis weapon to make orbs of power, which will feed other mods in this build that are very, very nice to have in addition with whatever else we have going on. I also ran Charged Up, allowing us to carry one extra stack of Charged with Light, makes it so we're basically always charged with light, which can be very helpful at the beginning of engagements or wherever else you may need it. Another thing is that I played around with a bunch of different mods for this particular build, and I found that Charged Up was actually the best one to put here. If you want to put something else you absolutely can another decision for charged up was that it's a pretty cheap mod with a major stat mod harmonic siphon and charged up that gives us an additional mod slot or additional mod energy where we can run ammo finders and allow us to have plenty of whatever ammo we're trying to look for whether that be special or just additional heavy for our arms we run grenade kickstart by throwing our grenade and using all of the energy we have, we will get some back, which is very helpful for this build. We're trying to reduce that grenade cooldown as much as we possibly can, and Kickstart is a great way to do this. We also rent Elemental Shards, which will allow our Station Shards to act as Elemental Wells, which is going to be very helpful making us charge with light in combination with another mod later on in this particular section and of course necessary chant mods when needed of course i preach it at least bring one or two whether they be an ability or a weapon chant mods are very important champs aren't that difficult to deal with however they're annoying they're so annoying so just make it easier for you and your fire team bring at least one doesn't matter which one it is just bring one as for our chest, we're going to be running two energy diffusion substrates. These give a 10% reduction to all damage done to you by combatants. And as of hotfix 6.3.0.3, these should now stack correctly. We're also going to run firepower. Spending our charge with light stacks to get grenade energy is going to be extremely nice. As I said earlier, we want to get grenade energy back as fast as possible for the next grenade to be ready since we don't have an additional charge. And this is going to help us greatly achieve that particular goal. For our legs, we're going to run Recuperation and Innervation. Both of these are great as we'll be making a ton of orbs with our stasis weapons in combination with Harmonic Siphon, and we'll be able to pick them up for health and grenade energy, respectively. We're also going to be running another Firepower mod. For those that know me well, they know I hate builds that stack a bunch of Firepower mods. However, due to the cooldown increase on Dustfield grenades just from putting on Renewal Grasp and only having the single charge of said grenade, this build absolutely absolutely needs an additional firepower mod or some way to get grenade energy back quickly. A solution to that problem would be if one of your allies is making solar wells, slap on Well of Ordinance. This way you can get grenade energy back from their solar wells, but if no one is running that, you're going to need to find ways to reduce that grenade cooldown, as it is a huge part of this build, so I would recommend running two firepower mods for this particular outcome. As for our cloak, I ran Lucent Finisher. As the hunter, I'm used to being the one who runs Aeons to make heavy ammo for my team, and Lucent Finisher allows me to do that while also using a different exotic, giving me more options for my build crafting, which is really amazing, especially for me, someone who really likes the build crafting and the ways that it can go, which with that statement, I'm really excited with what they could do with Lightfall, but at the same time, I'm very nervous that they could just nerf everything across the board and make every build completely useless, but that's a topic for a totally different subject. But Lucid Finisher allows us to get the same effect of Aeons while running whatever other exotic we really want to run, giving us plenty of options for whatever builds we want, no matter what class you're running. We then have the option between Lord Kelvin's Basilisk or Low Entropy Conductor. This will allow either our grenade to stun Overload Champions, which this entire build is designed around getting your grenades back faster, or our melee to stun Unstoppables. We get two Withering Blades by default, so that is very nice to help deal with Unstoppable Champions. Use whichever you need in order to help your team out, as well as being able to run any other weapon you particularly want in whatever slot you want, because this will free up a champion mod. Like, hey, there's Bear Barrier unstop, okay, slap anti-barrier auto rifle, or what is it, pulse rifle this season? Yeah, pulse rifle on your arms, throw low entropy conductor on, 
both champs are taken care of, and you can run whatever else you want for whatever other weapon you want. It's really nice. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And finally, we have Elemental Charge. This will allow our Stasis Shards, which count as Elemental Wells, make us become charged with light and make it so we can make use of our Firepower Mods to give us a lot more grenade energy back because now... You know, we pick up our Stacer Shards, we get three stacks of Charge with Light, throw a grenade, get Kickstart to activate, get Firepower to activate, pick up orbs, get your energy back from Innervation, repeat the process, destroy the Crystal, yada yada yada. There's a whole loop to it, and it's pretty simple. Throw a grenade, destroy Crystal, get energy back, Firepower, Kickstart, all that stuff procs. But I just explained the whole thing, but that is the entire build for this game video. Now Grandmasters are around the corner and I've seen a little rumor that they've reduced the Grandmaster difficulty down from 1605 to 1595 for entry and if that's the case that is really really nice because again this is a shorter season. The Grandmasters are only going to be in rotation once. This allows more casual players to access Grandmasters for potentially the first time ever since their release. So hopefully if that's someone like you, you could make use of this build and be able to make it through your Grandmasters this season. But with that, that is all I have. Check the links in the description as always, and I hope everybody has a good week.